ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰ ਫੇਰ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਹਰ ਹਫਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਗੈਸਟ ਸਪੀਕਰ ਦੇ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਈ ਵਿਦਵਾਨ ਕੋਈ ਲਖਾਰੀ ਕੋਈ ਪ੍ਰਚਾਰਕ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਲਿਆਉਂਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਗੁਰਮਤਿ ਦੀ ਸਦਾਂਤ ਗੁਰਮਤਿ ਦੀ ਸੇਦ ਔਰ ਉਸ ਵਿਲੱਖਣਤਾ ਦੀ ਸਮਝ ਆ ਸਕੇ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਨੂੰ ਸਵਾਰ ਸਕੀਏ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੀ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਹਨ ਮਾਰਟਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਾਫੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਵੀ ਹੋਵੋਗੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਸਾਡਾ ਵਿਸ਼ਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਅੱਜ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਹੋਵੇਗਾ ਪਰ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਹੋਵੇਗੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਵੀ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਪੱਖ ਆਪਣੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਲਿਆਈਏ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਿ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਇਨਸਪੀਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਮਿਲੇ ਮਾਰਟਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਮਾਰਟਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਟੈਲ ਮੀ ਹਾਊ ਡਿਡ ਯੂ ਕਮ ਟੂ ਥੈਟ ਕਨਕਲੂਜ਼ਨ ਟੂ ਟੇਕ ਅ ਜਰਨੀ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਰਿਗਾਰਡ ਆਫ ਨਾਟ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਅ ਸਿਕ ਐਂਡ ਬਿਕਮਿੰਗ ਅ ਸਿਕ ਸਿੰਸ ਯੂ ਵਰ ਨਾਟ ਬੋਰਨ ਇਨ ਬੋਰਨ ਇਨ ਅ ਸਿਕ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਯੂ ਵਰ ਟੋਟਲੀ ਅਨਫੈਮਿਲੀਅਰ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਟ੍ਰੈਡੀਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਬੋਰਨ ਇਨ ਅ ਕੈਥੋਲਿਕ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਡਿਡ ਯੂ ਕਮ ਟੂ ਥੈਟ level or or direction sure where you started to to uh, investigate and self discovery and then finally concluded in adopting sikhism so what i'll do is i'll give a bit of a background first yeah. to, for our uh, viewers at home um quite right you said i mean i'm born into a christian family and uh, church of england and what it was is that my family came to canada many many years ago in fact my family came to canada first in 1782 and uh, has since that time for a large part of my life lived on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia and uh, it's not a particularly uh, diverse place i mean most of the people are from that background so they're white folks and uh, they're they're christians and i grew up in that environment but uh, i can share with you that when i was you know relatively young you know 13 14 15 my thinking i already knew that it was different um than those of the other you know young boys particularly around me so growing up in rural nova scotia many of them were interested in hunting and cars and girls and for me i was more focused on you know religion and politics actually and so i began a process of you know personal self discovery and uh what i did is that i first began by looking at those faiths that were close to me both geographically and also theologically and so i started by you know investigating other types of christianity and then also islam and judaism because as we all know that group you know of religions basically has ties together there are similar prophets that exist between them and um as you know also in sikhism we we don't pass judgment we don't say that one religion is right and one is wrong uh, and and we don't condemn anybody certainly uh, for that matter but what it was is that uh i i was looking for a path that was particular to me right a path that i felt comfortable with and so uh, after searching those faiths i then uh, moved further afield uh broadened my search and looked at you know hindu jain buddhist shinto among others and and still uh you know no disrespect to any of those uh, as well but didn't find the path that you know really spoke to me on a personal level and in fact i didn't find it for some years and so i uh, so i took a break and then and then by chance uh, i was out at uh at a political convention in calgary uh where i you know encountered some you know uh, see people and one in particular his name is a uh, dolvinder ajla and he and i are still good friends to this day and what it was is i i asked him i said you know i'm 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 interested in learning about you and sikhism and and he said uh you know i'm born and raised uh, you know in a in a village in kapurthala i have the answers to some of your questions but not to all of them if you're uh, interested in learning more um when you get back to nova scotia where i was living at the time uh please let us know and so they very graciously uh, paji sent me a a big box of books and uh you know that box of books you know were really three types of books there was you know sikhism from a real religious or a theological base sikhism from a historical base but they also very wisely put in a few books on the geopolitical history of punjab as well because as you know uh, and as we all know the evolution of the sikh faith was very much you know tied into the geopolitical uh, situation in punjab at that time well a couple of interesting points but what i would like to know from you as you said uh, you studied buddhism you studied hinduism jainism and mm-hmm. then and all those mm-hmm. religions mm-hmm. when you were studying those religions what were you looking for and how did you come to that conclusion where you found your answers mm-hmm. 
a, in, in Sikh perspective. Yeah. Well, there's two aspects to that, uh, Paji. So one you can say is a theological aspect, okay? Uh, meaning that from a pure religion base, uh, it spoke to me. Uh, in particular, there was a book, uh, Concept of Man and Sikhism, by Dr. Jess Birkor, who which spoke to me directly, meaning uh, like the way that she chose to uh, use her words to describe the path of Sikhism, you know, aligned with my own, right, uh, directly. And so the light went on there. But more than that, you can see there was also a historical base too, meaning that, you know, you have in the Gurus, um, starting with uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, you know, a decision to not pass on the lineage of the Guruship to people who are in their family necessarily. They you know, chose those people who were best suited for the job, who had the divine light within them. And when we look at you know, the historical context, this is in fact very, very rare. When we look at any power base, because you know, having the Guruship would, would have been a power base as well, um, typically these things were kept within families. But you know, they had a lot of foresight, uh, you know, the, the Gurus had in terms of making sure that we you know, practice what we preach means we practice in society what we are talking about inside the Sikh faith, which is to, you know, treat all people fairly and equally. And in so far as that's true, um, they, you know, decided to make sure that the Guru should pass on to those people that were most deserving. So, Not, so you, studied, you studied Sikh history? Yes. So you studied multiple books which led you to more discovery? Correct. So more in-depth knowledge. Mm -hmm. Since, and I, I think that raises a, a one fundamental question in my mind, mm -hmm. is since you're not familiar with the language, I don't know what the fluency level of Punjabi speaking is, mm -hmm. but however, since Guru Granth Sahib is written in Punjabi, mm -hmm. isn't uh, that important, that it is very important for anyone to understand Sikh mm -hmm. values, Sikh faith, Sikh tradition, Sikh philosophy, Certainly. and Sikh undertaking, mm -hmm. that the, the language it should be a predominant factor, so you can you can you can incorporate the mm -hmm. cultural values mm -hmm. into it and then tie it. And I I think I'm posing a a a, a multifold question. And sure. the other one is, is it uh, is it only limited to when you become a Sikh that you you adopt five Ks, mm -hmm. have an outward appearance, mm -hmm. and what to me Sikhism is is more deeper than that. Certainly. And, and Certainly. it has more, more spiritual and underpinning, mm -hmm. which are very important for anyone to undertake. So mm -hmm. how did you overcome those difficulties which you faced since you didn't speak the language? Absolutely, uh, not just speak, but read it also in particular. Uh, so we are very fortunate that we have some scholars who have done you know, very good work in translating. Um, Gugan Sabji, among uh, other books. And so what you have, you have, you know, the actual uh, Gugan Sabji itself, which is in English, uh, and the, the version that I had come to me first was the Gurbachan Singh Talo version, <laughs> um, which, which is very nice because it's, it's not just a, a direct translation of the words. What it is at the, at the very beginning uh, of that, uh, you know, group of uh, volume of, of, of four books, what it is is that he has... Uh, you know, completed, you know, a backgrounder. And then in addition to that, there's those words that don't translate well into English. They're all given additional, you know, uh, explanation for each and every single page. So as you read through um, that particular translation, what is, you have a very solid background as to what was, you know, being expressed in the original Gurmukhi version of uh, the Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And so while you're quite right, you're not reading it word for word verbatim inside the original language, but you still have a very good understanding, uh, a solid understanding of the message that was, you know, trying to be conveyed by, you know, the various Gurujis who, and others who had their writings in the Guru Granth Sahib Ji. As an example in the comparison, I mean, a number of the original, you know, writings for the Bible uh, would have been in Aramaic and other languages, and then later, you know, transcribed into Latin, and then later or earlier than that, transcribed into Greek before finally coming into uh, English and French. We don't say that those people who are Christians who read the English or French version of the Bibles are less Christian than others who read it in the original Aramaic. Well, that, that, that is very true. Don't you think that always during translation you lose the essence? And I think lose the essence. Since I, I speak Punjabi, I can read Guru Granth Sahib. But when we, when I look at translations, yes, and and I I feel, mm -hmm. and I, I can I can see the dis disconnect. Yes. And and since mm -hmm. you were not exposed to the language, how did you how did you manage to develop that that connection with mm -hmm. metaphors, similes, and historical perspe perspective that was put into 
context mm -hmm. for our own inner growth. So yes. how did you uh, so let's, go let, by that? Let's, let's say, for example, if I were to have only read um, a single translation, yes. um, then I think that I would have had potentially fallen victim to you know, the pitfalls that you just expressed. Um, what I did, though, that was different than that is that, you know, I went through a number of different texts, a number of, a number of different analysis. And so from there, I was able to, you know, draw from that, you know, the, the pure essence. In addition to that, uh, we shouldn't, you know, lose sight of the fact that my wife was Punjabi. Um, and, and so she, uh, you know, has a master's degree in Punjabi literature. And so she serves to, as, as my aide, you know, and confidant to provide me with the direction I need to for those, you know, more difficult to understand passages. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, you know, not just the Gugan Sabji, but also the analysis in Punjabi, in fact, also, uh, you know, like Professor Saab Singh's uh, versions that we have at our home as well, that we're able to draw upon. And so you're able to, you know, sit down with Professor Saab Singh's, you know, analysis in, in Punjabi here, and then, you know, the Gurpachan Singh Tala version here in English, among other texts, and say, okay, do these line up? Uh, and if they don't, where, where don't they line up? Or where do they line up? And so you're able to do that compare and contrast itself for, for your own education and knowledge. And uh, I would say still, like even after now living over half of my life as a Sikh, I still consider myself a student. I am by no means an expert. Uh, and, and for this reason, I don't give lectures uh, on, on Sikhism at all. Yeah, you know, I'm a student of my faith and I continue to learn. Well, and, and if you have to share with our viewers mm -hmm. one experience after you became a Sikh, and, and that captured your journey and your struggle mm -hmm. and then the ultimate culmination in, in out of um, that struggle mm -hmm. that, that brought you exuberance. Mm -hmm. So what would that be? Well, I would, I would say ultimately the, the, the main event would be, you know, making that decision. Uh, and because so we, we kind of stopped the historical talk at, yes. you know, where, you know, I got the books, uh, did the reading and, and, you know, felt that this was my path. But still, it's important to realize that, you know, the community in which I was living at that time not just had no Sikh people, but in fact, you know, didn't have any South Asian people living in it either. If we take a look at the entire province of Nova Scotia, maybe, Paji, there's only about 150 families, uh, you know, living, living there in the entire province. And right. so the, the community, while there is a Gurthwad and whatnot, it is relatively small. Uh, and so for me then, I was taking a step not just out of, you know, my, my faith path, you know, that was being, you know, followed by my family, but also like from a cultural perspective, very much stepping out as well, because I was going to end up looking very different than everybody else around me. Of course. Yeah. And so, and so, you know, this caused me to take pause, you know, and, and think some more. And so I took a, a few more months, but then at the end of it, uh, ultimately, it wasn't a particularly intellectual decision, Paji, more of a spiritual and religious one to say that, you know, there comes a day in all of our lives, for those of us who are believers, uh, at the end of our lives, that, uh, you know, we enter into that conversation with Vaiguruji. And I did not want to be present for that conversation, knowing that I had found the path that was correct for me, and then not be brave enough or confident enough to follow. So it was on that day that I became a Sikh. And, and how did you stay well-grounded? Since, as you say, in Eastern Canada, there's a hardly Sikh population. You becoming a Sikh, all of a sudden your friends, your family, you know, other relatives and extended families begin to see Martin Singh as emerging something to be, mm -hmm. to be different. And mm -hmm. naturally they have many questions. Sure. And I'm sure, how did you, how did you respond to those curiosities that mm -hmm. were presented to you and, and then s still stay well grounded in school and college and whatever you're in professional yeah. career? So what it was, uh, what was fortunate of, my family knows me very well. And, and so, uh, I have always been someone who has behaved well, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, thought before taking action and that type of thing. And so while it was a certainly different decision, um, they didn't feel that I was making a decision that was anyway hurting myself or those around me. Sure. You know, I can, I can share with, with our viewers at home that, uh, you know, my mother said that, you know, my son Martin has always been doing interesting things in life. This one has simply lasted the longest, you know, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then, you know, it's very, very cute. My, and also, too, I should share that there's a bit of a, a libertarian streak that runs through the people that live in that part of Nova Scotia, meaning that, you know, each person, you know, has the right to decide how they live their own lives without interference from others. So as long as you're not causing difficulty to anybody else, then, you know, you're free to go and choose the path that you want to follow. Right. And, yeah. and when you have your, your, obviously your own children. Yes. And then you have been quite an active member of the community. Mm -hmm. And you, you have uh, developed connections with the uh, broader Sikh community. Yes. And how your interactions have been and what do you see? 
uh, do you see any difference? Do you see in how uh, the Sikh community who are born mm -hmm. to, to be Sikh and mm -hmm. then they are raised to be Sikhs mm -hmm. and they are exposed to that Sikh environment mm -hmm. throughout and their, their, their childhood and adulthood. So when do you s interact with those individuals and, mm -hmm. and, and the society at large? So what do you see and how will you describe that? So I can tell you that the, the experience has generally changed over time. I mean, from the beginning to the end, it was universally um, you know, welcoming. Um, people were always very, very accepting and very, very kind and generous. Um, at the very beginning, actually, most people thought I was Punjabi. And, and so uh, they would meet me for the first time and, and speak with me in Punjabi. And uh, uh, what's fortunate is that over the years, I now understand a fair amount. Uh, I, don't, I don't speak a whole lot because I sound a bit like a child Paji when I, when I, when I speak Punjabi. And so, and, but, uh, but I understand a fair amount. And so, and so they, could, you know, they knew that I could interact with them. Uh, and so uh, that was kind of the experience at the very beginning. Um, now, as I'm a bit more well-known inside the community, you know, people kind of know me as the Gora Sikh, right? And so they, they, they don't think I'm Punjabi anymore. They, they, they know very well my identity is different. Uh, also, what's been interesting is that, ex that experience of change has also uh, been felt by my children as well. When, you know, in the past when we were living in Nova Scotia, my children, you know, in the school were known as the brown kids. You know, now we've, you know, since we moved here to Brampton, they're known as the white kids because their father's the Gorasek. And so, and so it's been, it's been, you know, an interesting change for them as well as, as time has come along. But uh, the, the experience has been fantastic throughout. Uh, people are very, very kind and generous and gracious, and uh, we thank all of them for their hospitality. Yeah. Well, that, you know, with your, and I don't know which year you became a Sikh, and if you, if you mind to, don't mind to sharing that with us. Sure. At the same time, since that evolution, Mm -hmm. and your interaction with the community, as I said, in general. And you have seen a Sikh community is growing at, at, at an exponential level mm -hmm. uh, throughout, uh, throughout Canada. Sure. And it became a very vibrant community. Mm -hmm. And how do you see you fitting in in the community with the framework, and how do you think that you will be able to contribute for the common good of the mm -hmm. Sikh community in general? Mm -hmm. So what it is, is that uh, you're quite right, the, the Sikh community is, you know, growing very, very fast. Um, and uh, the community is already contributing in a lot of ways, with or without Martin Singh, you know, and, and I would say that they're con contributing in a, in a very positive way. Uh, the, you know, our, our young people are studying very hard, um, they're working, we're getting jobs in, in all levels of society. Um, you know, so we, we, we pay our taxes and do our civic duty. Uh, on top of that, the charity, you, you know, that's, uh, you know, being offered by the Sikh community is fantastic as well. I mean, we have the traditional ways through the Langar Seva that we do, but then also too, we know that we contribute a lot, like even here close by where we're recording the show, we have a Brampton Civic Hospital and the you know, emergency room ward among other parts of, of that hospital itself were you know, built and financed by, by the Sikh community uh, here in Brampton and you know, throughout Ontario and Canada. And, and so for my own part, I hope that I might be able to play you know, some small role um, you know, in, in terms of the development of, of the Sikh community here in Canada. I think that, you know, perhaps the best way I can contribute is maybe to help demystify the Sikh community for, you know, the rest of the Canadian public who don't know us well. I mean, here in Brampton, certainly, uh, you know, people are very familiar, no matter what their background, with who Sikh people are. But if you travel, you know, 30 kilometers north of here, you know, the, the population there really can't tell the difference between who's a Sikh person or who's a Muslim, and they may not even know that much, quite frankly. You know, that has been an ongoing uh, struggle for the Sikh community to, mm -hmm. to establish our identity. And Correct. I'm sure that locally uh, we are quite well known. Mm -hmm. But when you go, as you said, just outside. Yeah. So the, I think uh, that may be my role, Pudgy. I think it might be my role to be, uh, you know, to, uh, to speak, speak to the broader Canadian public about uh, who we are so, so that, uh, you know, they, they don't have any misconceptions. Uh, that us. leads to another question, which, you know, in general, I don't know if uh, how familiar are you or you have heard it or not. And, and when you see six have been, have been lumped together mm -hmm. as a part of South Asian community. Mm -hmm. And South Asia is not a continent, it's, it's the people from that region. Sure. And six have a, a unique identity mm -hmm. and they, they are a nation in itself. Mm -hmm. And being a part of Sikh community, mm -hmm. since you adopted Sikhism, yes. How do you feel in this perspective that should 
it should continue that we should be uh, called as a part of South Asian community, mm. or we have to do something where we need to establish and clearly define that Sikh community is unique, is different, mm -hmm. and has a identity. Well, I mean, certainly there's a Sikh identity. I mean, there is no question, right? Um, what's fascinating too is just how the things that developed for me personally also in that particular regard, because when I first you know, became a Sikh, you know, I was all by myself as it were. Um, now, of course, uh, you know, people, you know, take me as, you know, a full-fledged member of the community, um, in part just because of the, of the years that I have been a Sikh, but also, too, uh, I married into a Punjabi family. And so they, they see, you know, like, uh, like Sarda Pra, right? You know, like our, our brother, right? You know, is, is, is basically the, the approach that, that's taken now. And so uh, I, I do feel very much a part of the community, and, and I feel that, uh, you know, the community, uh, you know, has very graciously accepted me uh, with open arms. So what do you think about the Sikhs normally do not compel anyone or force anyone to become a Sikh? I, I think and and unless, unless somebody wants to, to adopt or become Sikh out of their own convictions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and, and there, there, there is a great difference. Yes. And since you have gone through that transition mm -hmm. and that evolution, so would you uh, like I, to share some thoughts yeah, about certainly, that? Yeah, certainly. I, I, I think that that's the correct approach, Paji. I, I, I think that, you know... Uh, we, we all have to find our own path, right? And for, for those, uh, like, I, I, it's one of the things that actually attracted me to the faith, the fact that it's, you know, not evangelical, meaning that we don't go door to door trying to stuff our sickism down people's throats, right? I mean, because that's not who we are, right? Um, but uh, also, too, as a result of that, um, for those people who are coming to the faith, um, while there are a number of different books out there that, you know, act as, you know, a bit of a guide, there is no, for example, 12-step program on how to become a Sikh, right? And so it means that for those who are interested in undertaking the journey, um, you know, it's, uh, the path is not 100% clear. That being said, though, maybe it should not be 100% clear. Maybe that those people who want to join, you know, should have to go through their own journey, right? Should have, to, should have to do their own study so that they know that the path that they're about to undertake is the one that's correct for them. Well, that's Guruji. Guruji has given us the exactly. direction that if you, if you are a Sikh, be a good Sikh. If you're a Hindu, be a good Hindu. Exactly if you're right. a Muslim, be a good Muslim. If exactly you're a Christian, right. be a good Christian. So that's why to bring it in the whole society uh, together mm -hmm. and be respectful compassionate and, and uh, nurturing. That's exactly and and right. that is what those values, in this, as far as Sikhs are concerned, mm -hmm. we want to promote them and this is how, how we evolve and interact with one another. Correct. But having said that, is there, is there if you have to sum up mm -hmm. a, in a few words, sure. and because time is getting closer, yes. what would you say to the Sikh youth? I would say to the Sikh youth uh, to make sure that you take advantage of the opportunity to know your faith, know your background, know your tradition and culture. Um, you're fortunate uh, to be able to live here in Brampton because you have all the resources very much right at your fingertips. And, uh, and uh, you know, while it can be a struggle. This and, is great. Yeah, yeah while, it, while it is a struggle, uh, be willing to be yeah. confident and brave enough to undertake that Thank struggle. Thank you very much. Time yeah. doesn't allow us. Once again, Gurbani Bichar Dekh Rehe Sar Darshkanda. Bohut bohut tan baad. Asi aas kar dehaan ke tunus e program pasand aya hovega. Je thoda koi prati karm hove, suja hove, ja comment hove, please onu saan jirur pe jina. Asi hamesha to hade so, if you have a lot of people who are not better than us, then you can see that all the people who are not better than us, you can see that all the people who are not better than us, you can see that all the people who are not better than us, you can see that
Sabe tudo e o pai.